It's been a great Sabbath already. I had a great time with the kids' church this morning. And I'll tell you what, I love to see the Holy Spirit moving because I had no idea what the theme was for the kids' church. Um, there's a reason why I put the theme together for my, my sermon, and, uh, but it fits just perfectly. It's about believing. And I'm looking for my little thing. There it is. Yep. I think I told you this before. I loved it on Lord Howe Island. You never had anything in your pockets. Now I got my pockets full of things. You know? <laughs> so, oh. Freedom, you know, we look for freedom. I'm looking for to heaven. We'll have freedom. No more pockets in heaven. <laughs> but we're looking forward to... Um, guys, can you get this... This one's not showing me anything. Can you, uh, the monitor? Can you get the monitor up for me, please? So the, um, the theme today, or the, the, the sermon today, is mountains will move. We're going to look at James chapter 5, verse 16. This is where we'll start. And I... It's there, but I can't read it, so I'm turning around and reading this. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Today, we're going to have a special day, too. At the end of this sermon, we're going to have an anointing of our brother Borg. If you haven't heard, Borg has had a, a really tough uh, diagnosis. He's had um, some... Uh, asbestos uh, poisoning in his lungs and he's uh, starting to lose some of his breathing they've given a bad diagnosis and we want to anoint him today and to anoint him though and when we anoint him at the end of the service we're going to ask the elders to come forward and we're going to ask also anyone that wants to be part of it to all the members to come forward but this anointing is something special. It's similar to, in some ways, it's kind of similar to the uh, communion service, which we'll have next week. You know, we don't take communion for granted, do we? It's, a, it's an important issue. It's an important thing, and we try to prepare our hearts for communion. That's why we give you an announcement a week before, and you did, to prepare your heart for communion. We want to be right with the Lord when we say, when we tell God, that I believe you died for me and I'm committing my life to you through this communion. Well, similar with the anointing. A little bit different, but similar. In James, the anointing is, well, James chapter 5, verse 16, it says that confess our trespasses, one another. Now, I'm not going to ask you to confess your trespasses to each other today, all right? That's not the time right now. But I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask the elders, I'm going to ask Borg to make sure that if there's any, anything in your heart that uh, you know shouldn't be there, to be surrendering that before we have the anointing service. And the elders and Borg for sure, but any other members that want to be part of it, I ask you to do the same thing too. To make sure your heart is in the right spot. When we say, when we ask God, through this anointing service, to do something powerful for our brother board. We need to have our arts in the right spot. So the question is, though, this, this effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. How do we find this effective, fervent prayer? Huh? How do we get this? How do we have this, this belief in this faith to have that kind of effective, fervent prayer of a real believer? Uh, so I'm going to look at a few verses to kind of try to help us get that. We're going to look at Mark chapter 9, verses 23 to 25. Now, I've, I've mentioned this before because I think it's so powerful when it comes to belief. I won't read the whole thing, but you can see it there. Uh, the issue is, well, I'll read 23 and 24, I will, but Jesus comes down from the, from the um, Mount of Transgression, um, not Transgression, Transfiguration. Comes down from Mount Transfiguration. There's a man who has a, or a boy who has a demon in him, and the disciples have tried to cast out that demon, and they couldn't do it. 
And Jesus comes into the scene, though, and he starts talking about how long has this, has he had this demon? And, and he asks the question, he says, Jesus asks him in verse 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And his response, beautiful response, was, I believe to help my unbelief. And Jesus automatically, in verse 25, then just goes ahead and heals. So that's the first step, is we've got to ask God for more belief, more faith, more strength. We call upon him and ask him, and he will give it to us. He wants to do great and powerful things. He wants to do that through us. But we have to have, trust him and believe that he can do it in the first place, and that he wants to do it for us. And that's what this man did. He said, yes, I believe, but you know what? I need a little more help. Help my unbelief. And he called upon Jesus, and he gave it to him. Now, belief or faith establishes us in God, in Christ. It connects us with Christ. It establishes us being that we become more and more connected to him the more and more faith and trust we have. Does that make sense? It establishes us to the power that he has then. You know, through the Gospels, he says that your, your faith has healed you, right? Your beliefs has healed you. And what is that? It's that, that connection saying, that, yes, I am connected to the power of heaven. I'm established in that. I believe it. I trust it. And I want to be part of it. And I can let you go, let you do what, uh, what he wants to do then. It's like the power of your car. A little more than the power of your car, but... Your car is, it has the ability to take you from point A to point B, right? And we believe that. We trust it because we've sat in and we've done it. We've seen other people do it. But if we didn't believe it had the ability to do it, if we didn't think that our car would actually start up when we went out there and take us to the point A to point B, we, might, we probably wouldn't even go out and try it. But since we have a belief that it can happen. It establishes us in that belief that we can get in that car and go. And, and that's the same with God. If the power is there. The power is there. It's the power of the universe is available to us. We just have to believe it. Connect with it. And go and act upon it. In Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, verse 20 through 24, if you can please turn your, your Bible for this one. I'd like to get people in their Bibles going through the pages themselves. And here we have Jesus giving a lesson to the disciples. It says, now in the morning as they passed by this, the fig tree. So earlier the day before, he cursed the fig tree. Cursed it, to, it would no longer give fruit. He passed by and they saw that the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter remembered saying to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed was withered away. So Jesus answered and said to him, to them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that, that you receive them, and you will have them. So let me ask you a question. Does that mean that everything we ask for, God is going to automatically respond the same way or respond with that, the way we want it? Do we have control over God in that, in, in that manner? I can get down and I can say, Lord, that escarpment outside my house, it's kind of blocking my view to whatever I want to see. Can you please move it? What kind of chaos would we have if each one of us had the ability to move mountains anytime we wanted to? There'd be deaths everywhere because the mountain would go on top of somebody's house or something, right? 
or so an o or a boat in the ocean. There's something more to this, something deeper to this than just our ability to, to do great powerful things at our whims. I say, no, that doesn't mean just because Jesus is saying that all things will happen just like we're asking. No, I, I just, uh, uh, the thing, well, we're going to look at verse 25 and 26 in a second. I believe that reveals the full truth behind it. But no, we are the servants. We must always remember that. We're the servants of the Lord God, our King. Our trust in Him we trust in him that he has the ability to move mountains. And if it, is, if it is his will to move that mountain, and we ask for it, he'll gladly do it. He'll gladly do anything we ask if it aligns according to his will. But if we're asking things that maybe aren't the best thing for us or for the situation, then we, he's still the boss, and we must trust that. We are not the boss, he's the boss. Verse 25 through 26, it says, Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. So the and makes sure that you understand. These verses are connected together. The verses 23 and 24, it says, whatever you ask will be given to you. And, he says, whatever you, if you need to forgive somebody, forgive them. And whatever your sins you have will be forgiven you. There's be one thing, there's two things you can be guaranteed that God will answer your prayer every single time. Forgiveness of sins. He wants to forgive your sins. He'll answer that prayer every single time the exact way you want it. Help to forgive others. He'll give you that also. Those are the biggest mountains in our world, too, I think, in our lives. They can be huge mountains. And Jesus is saying, I am powerful enough to do anything. I can wither trees. I can move mountains. But the biggest mountain I can do is give a heart of, of stone to make it into a heart of flesh. And make it into a, 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 a believing, trusting person who really connects with me and the Father above. That's the big mountains that he wants to move in our lives. Now he gives us miracles. He, he rose people from the dead. He did all kinds of miracles. Walked on the, on the ocean. Stopped the oceans from furies. Miracles are definitely possible and he calls us upon to do miracles at times. But we always got to remember he is the boss. We are the servants. There are certain things he'll answer yes every time. And he linked that there with the forgiveness of sins. Though. Now, we'll go to Luke chapter 17, verses 5 and uh, 5 through 10. To set up this now, verses 1 through 4, you see Jesus, he's telling, him, telling his disciples, he says, look now, if anyone uh, offends one of the, the new believers, the young people, and makes them sin, better for you to be cast into the sea than to, to do that, right? And then he goes on, and he says, if your brother sins against you, you go to him, you say, look, you've sinned against me. I need to, we got to work this out. And if he repents, what do you do? Forgive him. And if he does it again, and you talk it out again, and he repents, forgive him. Seven times in a day, he says that you must, re at least seven times. And it goes beyond seven. Seven is a perfect number. But the idea is, somebody is repenting in front of you, and you forgive him. You move on. Well, this is how the disciples respond. And verse 5 is, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Obviously, they had an issue with that little comment and saying, oh boy, this is tough, right? This is, really, this is tough. This is not normal life. It's forgiving somebody seven times for the same offense in one day. Who's going to do that? Actually, even kind of, I've even get caught myself 
going against us by teaching people that God wouldn't do something like that. That if you ask for forgiveness from God and then turn around and did something else, did the same thing again and asked forgiveness and you kept doing that, that you wouldn't be forgiven. But I think I've been rebuked when I read that because it says God is expecting us to do, this, do that. But he's asking them something very, very tough here. And they said, whoa, whoa increase my faith because that's asking for a lot. And then he goes on and he says, he, he another little uh, illustration with the, with the faith. He says, so the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled by the roots and be planted in the sea. And it would order, it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant, plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down and eat? But will he rather say to him, prepare something for by my supper, and, and gird yourself and serve me until I have eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does, does he thank the servant because he did the things which were commanded him? I think not. So likewise, you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. So this time when Jesus is getting in that illustration of being able to uproot things and throw them in the sea, a tree or whatever, he, he actually he brings in the idea. He says you can do it. He says you can do it, but he also, he also lets you know that you got to put some labor into it too, not just God. That we are the servants, God is the king, but whatever we're asking to do, we need to put our labors into it too. You're the servant, if you're out there serving, you, you do your job, you do the best you can at whatever you're asking for, then you get on your knees and you ask God to help you, and he'll help you. That's one, one area to look at in there. The other area is, is that having faith. We have to ask for that faith. We have to look for the faith. We have to, we have to try to uh, test God, I guess, in some senses, to build our faith. Test God in the right manner, the right manner just to, to build our faith. But we are to put our efforts into it, too. So let's say we're, we're praying for a community center. I hope guys are praying for community center. You know, we're still kind of on hold on that. Um, but maybe July 15th, we might have some good news. So keep in prayer if the Lord uh, opens up the doors there. But what do we do? So let's say, we use this for example. July 15th, we're asking that a grant that we put in for $55,000 to pay for that community center over there. If the grant comes through on July 15th, at least for the... Um, uh, that's the first part of the grant, meaning that for the next month, there has to be so much votes for it, the community votes for that grant. The most amount of votes gets the grants. So what do we do then? Do we just sit and pray on July 15th if it goes up? No. We don't just sit and pray. We get out there. We knock on doors. We do whatever it takes. We talk to all of our friends. And we say, hey, let's vote for this thing because it's going to be good for the community. We are servants. We trust in the king, the God, that they can make it happen. But we also put our labors into it. And we work hard for it. Now, St. Augusta, well, Augusta, Augustine, I should say. Augustine, uh, yeah, he taught some things that weren't maybe all correct. He taught some things that were correct too. But he made this quote. He says, pray as though everything depended on God and work as though everything depended on you. And I think that's a good principle. It's a good principle that God wants to partner us with whatever work that he's asking us to do. We need to work, our, work to the best of our abilities to make that happen. But at the same time, we're praying like we cannot make it happen unless he makes it happen. Does that make sense? And then God can bless that. God can bless that. He can make that happen. 
I'm going to go back to James 5 now. I'm going to read those, those uh, four verses before uh, verse 16 that we read before. It says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. This is what we're going to do with, with board today. And verse 15, And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And 16, Confess your transgression to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of righteous man avails much. Tell me, folks, how much of those words are relating to physical sickness compared to spiritual sickness and spiritual healing? Am I right or wrong saying that a little bit of physical healing, but most of it is I'm focused on spiritual? The anointing that happens just like the paralytic we had in the, uh, the young... Uh, the children's story here, this or not children's story, children's church. Pastor, uh, what was his name? Rangi, yeah, yeah. Did a great little drawing of that, of that, uh, that, that story. The paralytic, though, he needed real healing. What healing was he looking for? He was looking for actually the heart to be healed. Jesus knew that, and he says, your sins are forgiven you. And Jesus would have been happy to walk around just to walk away. Well, in some senses. I mean, he always wants people to be healed too. But the healing of the heart was what was most important. And then he said, well, because you guys don't believe, because you don't think that I have the ability to do this, stand up and walk. And the guy got out, stood up and he walked out of there. I view this I, in my heart, I believe, as James chapter 5, that what Jesus is talking about the most is the healing of the heart, the man of a heart, heart of a man, healing of the sins, helping them to have forgiveness in their hearts. And it doesn't matter how long you've been in the church, it doesn't matter how, how, what rank you are, elder, pastor, we all need that healing. Amen. We all need that healing. And so that's the first thing we're going to do. And that's the reason why it's most important that each one of us are, are in, in the right mind when we lay hands. That we trust and believe. First of all, we trust with all our heart that God is able to take that sickness away from Borg. Take it right away from Borg and throw it in the deepest part of the sea. He's able to do it. Absolutely he's able to do it. He's raised people from the dead. He heals people all the time. He is able to do it. But more important than that is that his heart is continually to be healed. And to go along with that is that we believe and trust that God has him in control. And that God's will needs to be done. Not my will needs to be done. Sorry, Borg, not your will needs to be done either. That God's will needs to be done in this. And that's what matters. And we ask in full belief that he can do it. That he will do what he wants. Or what's best. And Borg, if you can kind of make your way down here now. Um, we're going to get ready to do this. He's asked us, he says, when somebody is ill and sick, that they should come to the elders and ask the elders for anointing service. Our brother Borg has come and asked us for the anointing service. And he's also asked us for the members of the church to be part of it too. And we'd love to have each one of the, everyone who wants to be part of this service. Can I have that chair, John? Thank you. And uh, we'll, in a second, we'll have you set up here. Well, have a seat, and I'm going to ask the elders to come up. 
And then we'll, the elders will put their hands on him. And Pastor, uh, Pastor Harold, if you please come up. The elders will put their hands on, uh, on Borg. And then anyone who wants to come out, also put your hands on the elders, on the uh, elders' shoulders. Um, and I think I'll ask Pastor Harold to start in prayer. Maybe Asher and, uh, and um, Jeff to pray in an elf. Gracious Father, yours is the power and the majesty and the glory. We thank you for calling your servant Borg to yourself and granting him a living faith. We thank you for the service which he renders in your name. And Father, now as he sits here and we pray over him and anoint him. We pray that you would grant him that deepest healing, life, faith, and hope, and love. And that if it is your purpose now, Father, that you might take away this condition which threatens his life. But Father, prepare his heart for one day we must all stand before you. And so we pray that your mercy and forgiveness will pardon his sin, embrace him, and do in him that which is your purpose. Mm. And we ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we come before your glory this morning. We give you praise and honor. Lord, I pray that this moment you might take away all my sins, that the prayers I bring and the prayers we bring as a church, as brothers and sisters, might be acceptable to you. Mm. Heavenly Father, I bring a man, a man who loves you to your, to your feet this morning, a man who's worked for you, who's worked mm. for others, worked for the poor, but today, Father, he sits here with his heart looking upon Calvary, where his and our salvations come from. Father, I pray that we, we might pour your spirit, your anointing spirit on him, mm. that, Father, you might be healed. Mm. Touch his heart this morning. Lord, we don't know what the future has in store for us. But we know that the future in Jesus Christ is eternal life. Mm. I bring him to you today. I pray for this church, Lord, as we come together in spirit and in truth, that, Lord, you might hear our prayers, that, Lord, you might give a book at the understanding he need, that, Father, one of these days, the pain and suffering will pass and you'll come in the clouds to take us all to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our Father in heaven, as we bow before you, the Bible says we are to humble ourselves before God and he will reward us openly. And Lord, we would humble ourselves before you. We would seek forgiveness of our sins that you might hear our prayers and answer them. We thank you for your great compassion to us, Lord. We thank you that you left heaven and you came down here to save us. Mankind would sinned. Mankind has gone his way all the time. And patiently you bring us back. We know Borg's work. We know the work he does for the poor. And Lord, we would ask that you would bless him today. We would ask that you would pour your spirit upon him. And may the Lord bless him and keep him. May your face shine upon him, I pray today. We are asking for healing, Lord. You are the giver of all health and all life. And we would just lay it at your feet that you would care for this man. 
and this mesothelioma will settle down and, and he might live a more fruitful life. But Lord, we have to leave it with you. Your will be done here, we pray today. But we come in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord in heaven, you've heard the prayers of the elders. We know from the fact that through the word and through through experience just how much you love Borg and how much you're watching over him, how much you've used him. And Lord, we know that you've anointed him with the, the Holy Spirit as you've used him much in life to help many people. And now we ask for another anointing. We anoint him with, with this oil. And we ask that for healing if First of all, it has been prayed the continual healing of the heart. And we're praying for healing of the body, if it's your will. You've asked us to, to pray these prayers. And we believe that you're able to do all things. And we trust you in all things, so we're leaving this in your hands. And now as I anoint my brother, I pray, Lord, that your spirit will bless and heal this man. In your name of the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Now back. It's my 80th birthday tomorrow. It's his 80th birthday tomorrow, and we're praying for 20 more <laughs> after that. Never last song. We belong to an amazing family, don't we? Amen. That we can surrender all to Jesus. To Jesus I surrender all To Him I freely give I will ever love and trust Him In His presence daily Forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender, oh, I surrender, oh, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. May 
me, Savior, holy thy. Fill me with thy love and power truly know that thou art mine. I surrender Glory, glory to His name. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. bow our heads please lord in heaven we surrender all to you we we know lord that you have the ability to do great powerful things but we have to surrender our will to you and just align our will with yours may we trust you when there's things in our lives that we need to happen may we believe and may we call upon you the Lord ultimately help us to surrender that to you so we give it to you we don't keep frustrations in our hearts or worry in our hearts but we give it to you believing that you will do that you can do and that you will do us best in every aspect of life we pray for faith and belief as we walk with you and we also pray for a surrendered heart to your will. May you bless us through the week, and may you use us in, in whatever aspect you would have us to, to help others, to give a cheer in somebody's ear, to give a little bit of gospel knowledge to somebody. May you use us to be a blessing in your ministries and bring us back next week to serve you again, worship you again. Praise in Jesus' name, amen.